Alright, this is the latest entry in my video diary. I really couldn't be bothered switching on a camera, you know. I just feel that I'm dying and uh, I was thinking what's the point. But then I remember I've been uh, keeping a video diary for 30 years now as a scientist and researcher. Yeah, and, uh, and I also remember there wasn't originally for other people's benefit. It was for my benefit and it has been a lot of benefit. I found it tremendously valuable to uh, talk to a video camera because it gives you the opportunity to see how others see you, to see how well you present yourself, to see how you are present yourself, to see who you are. And if you do it month after month or day after day, you get a chance to see uh, what you're not doing anything about, what you keep talking about that you're going to do, but you never do. You see, if I keep making a video diary and saying, I'm going to uh, legalize cannabis, well, <laughs> that would be a silly thing to do. But if I said I was going to get a new computer, and I kept saying it every month, then I would soon spot that. I would think, oh, this Wally keeps saying he's going to do things and doesn't do them. Well, I reached that stage about 1985, and then I started doing the things I said I was going to do, and that meant I started doing a lot of things, big things, rapidly, one after the other. I became an executive. I became a doer. I became an effective creator of the future, thanks to the video diary, because I didn't like embarrassing myself by saying I never did what I said I was going to do, so I would like to be able to switch on the camera and say, hey, hi, remember I said I was going to do something, I did it, yeah, well, there, yeah, I'll explain to you that one of the basic values of video diary, it's got a lot of other useful values, such as learning about areas in which you are ignorant, because if you examine your video again and again, you can criticize it and go, I don't like that. Stop saying, um, um, um. So I stopped saying, um, 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 24 years ago. But I wouldn't have done it if I hadn't been for the video diary. So I recommend it. Me personally, I've done a lot of the things I said I was going to do. But then again, I know an awful, awful, awful lot of things that I was going to do have been brutally sabotaged by other people, as has my whole life. You know what I mean? My mum and dad left me a hundred thousand pounds or more. Everything I bought with it has been stolen off me. I don't, I think that's terrible. Well, if you've been watching my video diary, you would know what I've lost and who took it. But, eh, uh, I've got to admit, you, loyal viewer who has watched everything else and sees just how interesting this little life has been for this little man. I've got to admit, I really do feel like chucking it in, you know. Oh, I'm dying. I've got nothing to do. I've got really nothing to do that I can do. I don't have a place to live. All of the people that have been paid to help me have fucked me over. That means the homeless hostel in Jamaica Street. They did not help me. They got paid a lot of money. But they put me out in a worse condition than they got me. And uh, the last little hostel that I stayed four nights in, I got nothing. I didn't even get to wash my face or brush my teeth. I didn't get a bath. I didn't get my laundry done. All I got was my best clothes all messed up with water and soap. Yeah, I think it's terrible. I don't think the society is getting better at all. My dog, right, if you've been watching my videos, you know my dog. It's a highly unusual, indeed unique creature, because there's only one of me. I know that. It's such a pity, because I could do with a bit of help from a character like me, but there isn't another one. 
So uh, I've got to be weak and strong for myself. That means if I expose my weakness, which you've got to do to get it sorted out, I'm the only one that's going to sort it out. Anybody else I expose it to is likely to use it against me. That's what I'm so far. Do you understand? Am I explaining it correctly? Or am I making it vague? Because most uh, social workers and uh, psychiatrists and doctors and council officials don't seem to believe I'm speaking English in a logical and understandable fashion. But when I watch my videos, I find it quite easy to comprehend what I'm saying. What about you? Am I a loony or what? Oh, put it like this. When I'm talking to you, you don't look to a record that's in a computer in front of you to find out who I am, do you? No, you listen to what I'm saying and look at what I'm doing. That's how to find out who and what I am, isn't it? But this lot, the social system, as I <laughs> scrappily call it, yeah, they think that once you've got, they've got down on record some fact about you, that stays true forever. And that fact can be he is psychotic, schizophrenic, uh, whatever. Pyrotechnic, whatever. What, what they write down, they, they just stick with that. Oh, look, here's that one. He's useless. He got kicked out of a hostel. There's no point in giving him a bedroom. Well, let me tell you, a 63 years old, uh, a sensitive, educated, cultured man who has uh, lived around Britain and in other countries, a man who is used to brushing his teeth and so forth when he gets up over day, it is terribly, terribly humiliating and degrading to be made to live like this. But I would say nobody should be made to live like this. You see, I have compassion. I don't think you can say, oh, that's a scumbag, leave him. Yeah, sure, if he's sniffing glue and snorting cocaine and whatever, yeah, maybe he needs a little bit of correction in his head, but you don't have to leave him dying on the pavement. That's not going to sort out his head. Well, hey, I'm glad I've mentioned this because at least it'll be known I didn't give up like a wimp. I just didn't lie down and go, oh, you've beaten me. Very close to it. I might do it. But I'm, what I'm thinking of doing is getting my dog back. Because when my dog's with me, I think I'm having a great time. No matter where I am and no matter what I'm doing. The reason is, my dog is incredibly happy to be alive. And one of the reasons for that is, I've made sure that my dog's life has been pleasant every single day that that dog has been with me. I have made it my top priority to make sure that dog remains as happy as possible, as interested as possible, as entertained as possible. I like to provide a variety of learning experiences for the dog every day, yeah? So it probably is a good idea to get my dog back, in it? But, me and my dog cannot be accommodated anywhere. There is nowhere that we can sleep together in comfort, with security, and have any other kind of life that we're going on with other than eating, shitting, pissing, and sleeping. Even so, that's what I'm going to do, because it's better than anything else I've been doing since I last saw the dog. Since the last saw the dog, I've been totally miserable, pessimistic, dying. I keep saying I'm not suicidal, but fuck it. I'm very close to just grabbing something and topping myself, but I would like to do it in a noisy fashion that will bring some attention to the terrible social injustice that needs cleaned up around here. I don't want my death just to be another sad statistic. No, if I do have to die earlier than I want to, I'd rather use that for the benefit of other people because that's just the kind of guy I am. Early on in my career as a philosopher, it was revealed to me that working for other people's benefit 
is the best thing I can do for myself in the long run. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You can think it's crap, but I think the man who works for the community is the most valuable member of the community. I think that the man who works for himself isn't even in the community. That's my opinion. And I've stated it. And I think it wasn't too quiet to be heard, was it? I'm glad I've mentioned it because I will now switch off and go back to the pathetic victim who goes, oh dear, I've got nothing to do. I feel horrible. And uh, where's my dog? I've got no love in my life unless I have a dog. Because I certainly don't love feeling sick. Right? Right, that was gabble, but I'm glad I said it because, as I say, this is a scientific experiment I've been working on for many, many years. And I'm doing this partly in memory and honour of my brother, Alistair, who died in horribly tragic and similar circumstances, homeless, when he shouldn't have been robbed, when he shouldn't have been without any help, when he shouldn't have been pity about it, was me and Alistair went and talked to each other when he died. I've been left with a guilty conscience ever since. Bummer. Not right. Society needs a few changes. It needs more than one man to put these things right. If I go to talk to people about, uh, let's clean up the housing in Bristol, if I do it on my own, the bouncer will see that I'm removed from the premises by the police. If I had with two of us, it wouldn't be so easy because we could make a video record of what was said. If there were three or four of us, we might even get to see George Ferguson. If we could get a crowd, we might even sort the town out. It is a nice town. It's got a lot of potential. There is a lot wrong with it. I think we should work very hard on increasing what's right quickly, like this place. This is very nice. More help should come into this place. And uh, the things that are wrong, we should start putting them right now. Not tomorrow, because they'll be worse tomorrow. I know, because they're worse now than they were yesterday. Anybody with me? Because if not, you're the nana, because I've already lived in paradise for many years. See, I've been cleaning up as I go along, so that I live in a better and better world as I go. It's worth a try. It worked for me. Sure, it's a bit of a surprise when you get kicked out of your rightful dwelling place and made to live in the gutter again. But you've still got the pride of what you did in the past. You know what you did. Yeah, I'm a great guy. I've really gone for it. I've tried my best to help you and you and you and you and I don't even know your name or your game. And I've been trying to help you anyway because I think the human race is all one family. What a wally, eh? No, I think we're all descended from the same DNA. Humanity is one species. We're related to each other. Oh, I know we get a lot of fun out of the games of shafting each other and stealing from each other and competing with each other and being better than each other and having more than each other. I only enjoy these games for a couple of years. But then when I had more money than most people in town, I put it to use to improve the community for everyone. I think that's a good idea. I'm sticking with it. Now, I might die tonight. I might die this afternoon. I might die suddenly of a burst organ in my stomach or from any other of the various physical conditions that are bother me or from exposure or whatever right but i'm not going to do it i whimper and victim i want to go and get my dog that's awkward because uh, i'm sorry to say that <laughs> people take advantage of victims if they don't help them they strip them of what they can it's it's rotten, but that's just the way humanity is. I think things are due to change. I think we should all start improving things together. I'm all for putting it right now. I'm one who thinks that the only time anything ever gets done right is today. It's always today. It's never tomorrow. And yesterday never gets sorted. So we should be working on improving today. Everyone will meet. 
When I switch this off, I'll probably forget about that and then I'll just slump into a spoon again and wait to hear news about my dog. And if I don't hear news about my dog, I'm going to go catatonic. And that means, you know what that means. It means police officers going, Will, Will, can you hear us? Will, Will, can you hear us? If you don't respond, you're going to get sectioned or you're going to get dragged off. If that's the way it goes, that's the way it goes. It's up to you lot. Uh, I've been really patient because I'm saying things here that I've said a thousand times before and they've been ignored every single time. Uh, I just give myself another medal for that. Well done, son. You have been patient. You've kept coming back no matter how many times they've shot on your face. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. I know. I was there. <sighs> now, the silly old duffer is going to shut up. Uh... I remember all the people I loved in the past. Uh, I've loved a lot of people because generally my approach when I go into a new social situation is love everybody unless somebody gives you a reason not to. Ah, oh, I don't like him. I don't like her. They're the exceptions. The rest I love. They know it. Unless they're stupid. Anyway, that's it. That's, that's all I've got to say. I'm sorry it's a bit cynical. I'm sorry it's a bit bitter. But hey, dying is shite. Especially when you don't deserve it. Especially put down the toilet instead of giving awards and support for all the hard work you've done over the years. It's just that I picked a big one. Legalising cannabis isn't a simple thing like diverting a motorway or saving a bunch of trees. No, I'm afraid that legalising cannabis is uh, uh, bigger than uh, rectifying slavery, overthrowing capitalism, innit? Yeah, so I didn't win my battle. But I picked the biggest battle I could get into, and I did as hard as I could. Yeah, it's a bit better than working for the council. Ha 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 ha. No respect. Yeah, well, I'm going to shut up now. I'm sorry it's so bitter. I'm sorry it's so twisted. And I'm sorry circumstances have made me feel these terrible emotions of failure and cynicism and giving up. Victim, abused, robbed. I've never robbed anybody. I've never abused anybody. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I said it. It's better than having a fucking computer stolen out of my pocket after I die and uh, nobody ever get any. See, I'll try to upload it. If not, fuck it.